Last time, we talked about how the language 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n is not inside of CFL, but it is inside of all because it is a subset of, um, of the power set of sigma star. So what we want to do is we want to now extend our set of machines, uh, our set of models of computation, to include more complicated um, uh, more complicated, uh, we will, so that they will in, they will be able to represent languages like this. So we've gone from a DFA to an NFA, and we showed that they were equivalent. Then we went from an NFA to a PDA. So notice that the difference between an NFA and the PDA is really that they're very similar, except that the PDA has a stack. If you think about it, that the DFA, its delta function, is Q cross sigma, which is really a maybe sigma, and then it goes to the power set of Q, whereas the one for a PDA, its delta function, is Q cross maybe sigma cross maybe gamma, arrow the power set of Q cross maybe gamma. So really you can think of an NFA, we could call an NFA a zero PDA, that means it is a PDA with zero stacks, and what we've been calling PDAs, we could call those one PDAs. Then what we could do is we could think about the, um, we could think about a new thing that we'll call a 2PDA. And what's a 2PDA? It's a PDA that has two stacks. So how could we use two stacks to solve this problem? Well, what we could do is we could say that you'll come into our accepting state, sorry, our start state, and then we'll use epsilon on the input, epsilon in the first stack, epsilon in the second stack, and push on a dollar sign into both stacks and then we'll go to this state. Now in this state what we'll do is if we see a zero in the input, then we won't look at the top of the two stacks, but we'll push on a happy face in the first stack and a happy face in the second stack. Then if we see a one in the input and a happy face in the first stack, we'll ignore the second stack and we'll pop off from the first stack and leave the second stack alone. And we'll go over to this state. And in this state, if we see a one, a smiley face, uh, epsilon, we'll pop off both of those. And then if we're in there and we see a zero and we see a dollar sign, the dollar sign there is we want to ensure that we saw all the ones. We actually don't really need this, we, we could just leave it alone, but we'll do that. And there's a smiley face there, then we'll leave the dollar sign in place and pop off the epsilon, and we'll go here. And then in this state, what we'll do is we'll, if we see a zero, a dollar sign, and a happy face, then we'll leave on the dollar sign and we'll pop it off. And then if we see an epsilon, a dollar sign, and a dollar sign, then we'll pop off both of the dollar signs and go to an accepting state. Now this 2PDA solves the 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n problem. Okay, well, what about the 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n, 1 to the n problem? Well, clearly we could solve that with a 3 PDA. Well, we can't solve it with a 2 PDA. So it would be really cool if there was a hierarchy of different kinds of computations that were determined by how many stacks you have. If you have one stack, if you have zero stacks, then you're a regular language. If you have one stack, then you're a CFL. If you have two stacks, then you're whatever these things are. And if you have three stacks, then you're this other category. And then if you had four stacks, there would be more, and so on. And there would be this infinite hierarchy of all the different languages, of all the different kinds of languages. 
Unfortunately, that's not the case, because it turns out that the third, after you have three stacks, they're all equivalent. These are all equal to one another. And kind of as an analogy for why you can think of it, remember the towers of Hanoi, where you have the three things and you want to rearrange them in some order and you can only put things on top of one another? What that does is it simulates the way that you have to move things around with a stack. And essentially what the 3 PDA does is it shows that once you have three stacks, you can produce any arrangement that you want of the elements on the stack. And so what that means is that once you had three, what you really have is you don't have a stack anymore. You have an arbitrary block of memory that you can rearrange in any way that you want. So we're actually going to not study the set of languages determined by the two PDAs. That's just kind of a curiosity that you might like to look at on your own. We're going to go right to this category right here of the three stacks or the things that, are, that have like a block of memory that they can arbitrarily modify. And this is where we get to the famous Turing machine. Now, um, uh, Turing machines were invented by the famous Alan Turing, who was born, I think, in 1912, somewhere around then. He was born right around World War I. Um, he, uh, he has a very interesting life. Um, there's a pretty decent movie um, about him called Imitation Game, The Imitation Game. You know, it's like a Hollywood movie, so it's very inspired by his life. It has lots of interesting things, but I highly recommend that you go read about Alan Turing as a person. He has lots of interesting things about him, um, especially for, uh, you know, our uh, situation that we're in today. We basically honor him as one of the founders of computational theory, and the sort of the the... Nobel Prize of Computer Science is the Turing Award, and it's named after Alan Turing. I won't spend much time talking about him as a person, but I highly recommend that you go look at it. Let's talk about the Turing machine, though. The Turing machine you can think of as a generalization of a DFA, um, where rather than making it so that you can have like a stack on the side like a PDA, instead what we do is we make it so that the Turing machine itself, the control unit, can decide whether it's going to move left or right looking at various parts of the input string. I think that the easiest way to do this is to write an example and we'll talk about it. So the transitions in a Turing machine are going to be written in the following way. We're going to write down A arrow B comma direction. And the direction is always either left or right. The idea here is that we're going to read A, we're going to write B, and then we're going to move in some direction. Now, the way that um, DFAs work is essentially they always move to the right. So if we think about a DFA that's like this one, where it has state A, and if it sees a 0, it stays where it is. This is the accepting state. If it sees a 1, it goes here, or it sees a 1, and it goes there on a 0. So this is the one that ends in 0. Okay, so this machine right here, it always moves to the right. Because every time it looks at a character, it goes and looks at the one after it. Now the thing, though, is, is that if we are allowed to run in either direction, if we can move right or left, then that means that it's no longer obvious when the program is over running, because like with the DFA, it always looks at every character exactly one time. It looks at one and it skips to the next one. It looks at one and it goes to the next one. But with a Turing machine, it's going to be able to go left. And so that means it may like look at the characters and then go look at them again. So what that means is that Turing machines have to explicitly decide when they are ready to accept or reject a program. So if we were to take this DFA and rewrite it as a Turing machine, we would do it in the following way. We'd have the state A, like before. We'd have the state B like before, and then we also have a state that we're going to call accept, and a state that we're going to call reject. And the way that this works is that if we ever go to accept or reject, then the computation is over. So if we ever go there, it's over. So that means that these are not going to have any arrows leading away from them. All right. So now, how is it going to work? Well, we want to loop on a zero. So that means that when we see a zero, 
we're going to replace that with something. Now, what are we going to replace it with? Well, we can replace it with any character. So we're never going to go back and left on this one. So let's just replace it with a blank character. And then we'll move to the right. And then if we see a 1, then we'll replace it with a blank character and move to the right. Here, if we see a 1, we'll replace it with a blank character and move to the right. And then if we see a 0, we'll replace it with a blank character and move to the right. So this is just the way that the DFA works, except that we are explicitly writing down what we change something to and whether we go left or right. Now the question is, well, what happens next? Well, notice that we're writing these blank characters, and we're writing those to the tape, so that means that we could read them from the tape too, because what if we are reading and then we see one of these blank things? So that means we have to say, what will happen if you're in A and you see a blank, or you're in B and you see a blank? Well, if you're in A and you see a blank, that means that you got to the end of the input and you ended up in A. So that means that at the end of the input, you saw a blank. So that means if we see a blank, then we'll replace blank and move right and we'll go to the accept state. But if the last thing that we, if the state that we were in at the end was a B, then we should go to the reject state. So this right here is a way of translating a DFA into a Turing machine that does an equivalent job. Okay, so now let's do, now let's be a little bit more precise about exactly what um, a Turing machine does. Okay, so a Turing machine at every step, it's going to read a character and then replace it. And then it's going to move left or right. And it is going to do this in the context of an infinite tape. We call the input the tape. This is sort of uh, in reference to really old kinds of computers that literally had like little ticker tape, like you may have seen thrown out of windows or whatever, um, that they could write on one little cell of it, and they could move it left or right, kind of like a um, like a tape recorder. Um, and they could write on one cell, move it, and then look at the next one. And then it has explicit accept and reject. All right. So now let's look at a more interesting one, a more interesting machine. Let's look at one. Let's look at a machine for the 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n problem. Actually, do you want to do that one? Actually, let's do a, let's do a different problem. Let's do the, um, let's do w hash w, where w is inside of 0, 1, star. This is something that's not in CFL either, so I, that's a good option. Okay. So here's the way it's going to work. We're going to start at the start state. All right? And then what we're going to do is if we see a 0, we're going to replace that 0 with a blank and move to the right. And over here, we know that we saw a 0. But we saw a zero on the string on the left. Just so to be clear, what, what does this mean? It means that we have strings like 0, 1, hash, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 1, hash, 1, 1, 1. So like that, there's a string on the left and the exact same string on the right. So if the first thing that we saw was a zero right there, then what we need to do is we need to move over to the right, past the hash, and then check to see that that's a zero. So what we should do then is we should loop here, skipping over any zero we see. If we see a zero, let's replace it with a zero and move to the right. If we see a one, we'll replace it with a one and move to the right. What we want to do is we're going to skip over until we get to the hash. Once we get to the hash, we'll leave it in place, and we'll go to this state right here. Now, in this state, we expect the very next character that we see to be a zero, 
So what we'll do is we'll have a rule that says, if you see a zero, then replace it with something. Now let's replace it with a happy face, okay? Because we saw that zero and it's what we wanted. And then let's move left so we can go back to the beginning and look at the next character. And then down here, we'll call this the back state. And what it's gonna do is it is going to, when it sees a zero, it's going to leave it a zero and move left. When it sees a one, it's gonna leave it a one and move left. That's when it's skipping over these things. Also, if it sees a hash, it's gonna leave it a hash and move left, okay? And then when it gets back to a blank, we're gonna go back to the start state. At the blank, we're gonna go replace that with a blank and move to the right. Because if it, we saw a blank, that means that we went back to that original zero. Now, what if the next character that we saw was a one? Well, in that case, we'll write it with a blank. We'll go over here. We'll skip over the zeros. We'll skip over the ones. And then we'll eventually see a hash. And now at this point, we expect to see a one, but actually we know that there's a happy face there. So we gotta skip over that happy face. So what we'll do is we'll put a loop right here that says, if you see a happy face, skip over it and move to the right. We have to have the same rule right here. See a happy face, skip over it, and move to the right. And then if we see a one, then we're gonna replace that with a happy face and move left. And so in fact, we also have to say, skip over any happy faces you see and move left. Now if we keep doing this, eventually when we get to the start, we're gonna see a hash. And that hash, we can erase and move right. And then what we expect to see is we expect to see only happy faces. So if we see a happy face, we'll erase it and move to the right. And then we'll finally get to an accept if we finally see a blank. However, if Right here, we see a zero or a one, then we know that there were extra characters. If right here we see a zero or one, there were extra characters. I mean, sorry, if, um, yeah, if we see a hash and there, and then we go over here and there is zero or one, there are extra characters on the right. If we get down here and we see a one, something's missing. And if we go over here and if we see a zero, there's something missing. So any transition that I didn't write down, um, it uh, corresponds to a, um, uh, a transition to reject. So now let's label these. So let's label this one as was zero. Actually, we'll, we'll label this left zero, and this is left one, and this is right zero, and this is right one. So this is a different states, and we'll call this one C for check. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this machine right here, and then we'll do an example run of it so we can see how it works. All right, there's our example machine. All right, so let's run out of a little example input. So, like with, um, like with DFAs, what we're gonna do, when we wrote down a DFA configuration, we wrote down the state and then the string. With PDAs, we, and this was the input, so we wrote down QI and then the input. And then with PDAs, we wrote down the stack and then the state and then the input. What we're gonna do with the Turing machine is we're gonna write down the tape to the left, and then we're gonna write down QI, then we're gonna write down the tape to the right. Okay, so for example, if we look at this machine and we ran it with 0, 1, 1, 0, the way that we're gonna write that is we're gonna say that we start off with epsilon A, and then we run and we get epsilon a blank, 
and then we get a zero, an A, and then we get one, one, zero. That's because we read a zero, replaced it with blank, and then we wrote down R. And actually, we don't need the epsilon anymore. Then we see a one, and so that means that we're going to have blank, blank, B, one, zero. Then we're going to have blank, 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 B, zero. Then we're going to have blank, 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 A, and then after it will be epsilon. And we're going to make a rule that whenever there's an epsilon, there's just secretly a blank there. So then we're going to go to accept, and then we're done. OK? So to run this example machine, let's run it on the input um, 0, 1, 1, hash, 0, 1, 1. Okay, I'm slightly worried that this will be too long. Yeah, let's actually do a simpler, a shorter one. Okay, so we're going to start off where there's going to be a blank to our left. We're going to be in the start state, and we'll have 0, 1, hash, 0, 1. So what happens? Well, we're in S, so we're going to go to the left zero state, and we're going to replace that zero with a blank. So we're going to have blank, blank, and then we're in the left zero state with one hash one in front of us, uh, zero one in front of us. Now in the left zero state, if we see a zero, we skip over it. So we're going to have blank, blank, zero, and we're still in the left zero state with a hash and a zero one. Then we see a hash, and that gets us to the right zero state. So we go to blank, blank, zero, hash, right, zero, zero, one. Now in the right zero state, if we see a zero, we'll replace it with a happy face and move left. So we'll be in blank, blank, zero, and we move left, so that means that we are now in the back state with a hash in front of us, and then after that, there's a smiley face and a one because we move left on the zero, replace it with a happy face. Now when we see a hash, we replace it with a left. So we're going to have blank, blank, zero, back, whoops, made a mistake. We're going to have blank, blank, back, zero, hash, happy, one. Then we're in back and we see a zero, so we're going to have blank, back, blank, zero, hash, smiley face, one. Then we see a blank, and that brings us to the S state, and we move right. So we're going to have blank, blank, S, zero. Oh, why did I have that zero? This should have been a one all along. I accidentally I suddenly replaced it. That should be a one. One, one, one. One, one, all right, one, hash, smiley face, one. Now when we see that one, we're going to move over, we're going to change it to a blank, so we're at blank, 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 and then we're in the left one state, and then there's a hash and a smiley face and a one in front of us. Now in the left one, if we see a hash, we switch over to the right one state, so we have a blank, 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 hash, and then the right one, smiley face, one. Now, if you see a smiley face in the right one, you stay in the right one. So we're in blank, 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 hash, smiley face, right one, one. And then when there's a one, we turn it to a smiley face and move left. So we have blank, 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 hash. And then we're in the back state. And there is a smiley face in front of us and then another smiley face after that. I'm going to shift this up. Then after that, we have blank, 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 back state, hash, and then we have smiley, smiley. We move past that, that one, so we have blank, 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 back, blank, 
hash, smiley, smiley. That blank puts us back in the S state. So we have one, two, three, four, S state with a hash and then two smiley faces. When we see a hash in the S state, we go to the C state. So we have one, we have blank, let's just write blank to the five. And then we are in the C state with two smiley faces. And then we're gonna read one of them. So then we get blank to the six and we're in the C state with a smiley face. Then we read the next one, so we're at blank to the seventh C and there's a blank in front of us. And then if there's a blank in front of us and we're in the C state, we go to accept. And we say yes. All right, so this is a little example machine that, a little example Turing machine that solves the W hash W problem. Think for a moment about how you could use a similar idea to solve the zero to the n, one to the n, zero to the n problem. What you would do is that when you saw a zero, you would skip forward and you would replace the first one with a happy face. Then you would skip forward and replace the first zero with a happy face. Then you would go all the way back and you would read the next zero and you would do it again. And then when you were trying to go left after seeing all these, and you got to a blank, then that means that there were no more zeros. So then you would go forward and you'd make sure that they were all happy faces until you got to another blank. That means that you checked off all the ones and all the zeros. All right. Cool, huh? I wonder if maybe we should do that. Spend 26 minutes. Okay, let's do that. Let's just do one more. So let's do 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 0 to the n. Okay, so we're going to have our start state. All right, and what we'll do is if we see a 0, we'll replace it with a blank and move to the right. Then we'll skip over zeros and move to the right. Eventually, if we see a 1, we will replace it with a smiley face and move to the right, okay? Or if we see a smiley face, we'll replace it with a smiley face and move to the right. And then over here, we will loop, actually, you know what, this thing, yeah. Yeah. This thing, if it sees a smiley face, it will replace that with a smiley face and move right. And if it sees a one, it will replace that with a smiley face and move right. Now over here, we're gonna skip over ones. And eventually we expect to see a zero. If we see that zero, then we will turn that into a smiley face and head left. Or if we see a smiley face, then we'll replace with a smiley face and move right. In which case we will turn smiley faces into smiley faces and move right. But if we see a zero, then we'll turn it into a smiley face and move left. So now what happens here? In this one, what we want to do is we want to skip over smiley faces and move left. So if we see a smiley face, we'll move, change it into a smiley face and move left. And eventually we expect to see ones or smiley faces. So let's actually just be kind of boring. If we see a zero, if we see a smiley face, we'll move left. If we see a one, we'll move left. If we see a zero, we'll move left. But eventually we'll see a blank. And if we see a blank, then in that case, we'll say that blank replace it with a blank and move right. Now we're back at the beginning. Okay, so then what happens if the very first thing that we saw was not a blank, but a smiley face? If the very first thing we saw was a smiley face, then we will turn that into a blank and move right. Now at this point, we're gonna consume all the smiley faces. And we're just gonna loop there. And if we eventually get to a blank, then we'll turn it to a blank, move right, and at that point we'll accept. 
And the idea here is, is that if over in this spot we see a, a 0, then we'll fail. And if over in this spot we see a 1, we'll fail. And if over here we see a 0 or a 1, then we'll fail. So the only way to get through this is to see zeros and then ones and then zeros and an equal number of them. Okay, so Turing machines are quite powerful, but you know they might be kind of tedious uh, to implement. I highly encourage you to implement on your own the zero to the n one, sorry, zero to the a one, zero to the b one, zero to the a plus b. Think about how that would work. Think about it. How could I do? 0 to the a1, 0 to the b1, 0 to the a plus b. Talk about that next time.